Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8A garden. And today we are starting the first seeds of 2023. I'm super excited. It's just such a fun time of year. So I have been sowing seeds indoors for five years now. I've learned a lot along the way. So I'm really excited to show you some new products I'm gonna be working with this year, my philosophy and goals for this year for seed starting. And then I'm gonna show you how I do my seed starting mix and actually get the seeds sown into their containers. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about seed starting indoors. There's definitely some basics that you're gonna need. You're gonna need a light source. Um, you can use a really, really bright window that gets minimum um, 10 to 12 hours of sun a day, so that's super important. It has to be a very bright, beautiful window, lots of light for a significant amount of time. You can work with something like um, grow lights, and these are my DIY grow light shelves that I did start this year, and I'll drop that link below if you're interested in checking out how I did these for super cheap. Um, there are a lot of traditional grow light systems that you can order from some really great companies. All of those, you do need a light source. Secondly, you're going to need some kind of container to put your uh, seeds in. A lot of times at big box stores, you're going to find those little peat pods. That's an option. It's not really an option I do anymore. Um, I just didn't really like how that went, how I went about all that. You can also do a really popular technique right now, which is soil blocking, utilizing a little kind of um, cutter thing that cuts the soil and blocks them into soils, which is really great. And I've done that for many years as well. But this year, I'm actually trying something a little bit different. And finally, you're going to need seeds. And when starting your seeds, you're going to make sure that you find out your last frost date of the year. Mine happens to be about mid-March. And you're going to count back the weeks from that particular date. Um, you know, you can go week one is the week, you know, right prior to it and count backwards. And then from there, you're going to read your seed packets if they suggest you tr start them six to eight weeks and uh, six to eight weeks prior to your last frost date that's when you're going to count back find out what week you want to start on and then go with that for seeds okay so let's talk about a few new pro products that i'm going to be working with i decided to change up the vessels that i've been working with in the past i've done the peat pods i've done the um, soil blocks i've done just trays i've done a wide variety and so this year i wanted to try something a little bit different these are the vigo seed starting containers when you order them you order the bottoms and you order the top these I'm excited to try because truthfully, the seed blocking situation and these massive trays of seeds doesn't really fit the amount of gardening that I do. I have a small plot of land and typically in one given seed tray, you're wanting to put all the seeds that are in the same kind of germination um, time in the same um, container or like a lot of the professional gardeners they'll just do um, all the same seed throughout the entire tray so, so so like you know 72 you know all in one and that's not really something i do i don't sow a lot of 72 of one particular type of seed i typically sow you know four to ten and <laughs> right around there and so i decided to try these um vigo seed starters this year it has eight cells in here and then the center cell is closed now it has slots on the sides to allow a lot of good airflow among the roots to you know make sure that we're trying to prevent um, any kind of bacteria or algae buildup and then it comes with its own specialty lid and the idea is that this center portion right here has little channels to every single one of these eight cells and when you put the lid on top, it has almost like this little cutout button in the center with a little bitty slit to let water through. And you fill this up with water. You don't even have to take the lid off. You fill this up with water and the water goes into these little channels and drips um, the correct amount of water into each of the cells. There it allows you to not disturb the seed. It kind of helps on overwatering too quickly and allows um, the soil to soak in the water a little bit at a time. And then it allows me, you know, to work with a smaller amount of seeds, you know, at a time instead of 72 cells or something. So I'm really excited to give these a try. I bought these during one of their sales. I think the price is pretty good. Um, I am happy to see that once I received this, this product, it's not, this is not flimsy plastic, y'all. This is heavy duty. These are gonna be around a long time. And so that was one of my concerns. I was like, am I paying a lot for some really flimsy, crappy plastic? No, these are some serious stuff. 
So I'm super excited about that. And then I've also got the plastic tops, which are nice, you know, thick plastic. These are not thin at all. So I'm really excited to get that started and see how it goes. Okay, so let's talk about an additional product that I'm be working with. I ordered this off of Amazon, and this is basically like a soil trap. Um, and the idea is that I'm gonna be working here in the studio this year, and you know, I'm obviously working on a table that I love and is an heirloom and belonged to my grandmother and is about 200 years old. So I'm not in a hurry to uh, mess it up. <laughs> so I wanted to have some kind of, you know, soil, you know, tray that I could mix soil in, but I didn't want one of those giant hard plastic ones because I don't have a lot of space for that. So the idea behind this is the corners snap together. I can work my soil in here. It's waterproof. The water's not going to go through it. And then when I'm done, I take this outside, I hose it off, and then it holds up flat so it doesn't take up a lot of room this is also very cost effective and so I was really excited about that to give it a try I wanted a nice large size see like this and then I can mix my soil in I can actually take my trays and work all I, I think it's gonna work out really really good for what I'm going for and so I will drop a link to my Amazon storefront down below if you're interested in ordering something like this for mixing soil inside I mean of course you can use it outside Side too but mixing soil inside and keeping your surroundings nice and clean but also something that's not giant and bulky and takes up a ton of room okay so before we get started let's talk about a few of my goals for seed starting in 2023 so my goal is to start less <laughs> which sounds weird, <laughs> it sounds odd. I wanna grow a wide variety of plants and I'm still gonna do that this year, but I wanna start less of each plant. I don't want 20 of one particular thing. I don't have room for 20 of one particular thing. I have a small backyard and I don't have a bunch of space. And so I'm wanting to start less and really focus um, on quality over quantity. So what I'm gonna be doing when I'm seeding is I'm probably gonna be seeding at least three seeds in each different cell to make Make sure I get really great germination no matter what and because I'm going to be sowing um, you know less overall cells it's going to allow me to really hyper focus on the ones I am working on and then hopefully I'll be able to you know better maintain the health of these seedlings as they're growing. I'm also starting a little bit earlier in the season than I typically would, and I'm hoping that this will allow me to have some more robust plants prior to planting them out after the last frost. This year, I'm also really hoping to make sure I do multiple rounds of seeds. A lot of times I'll just, you know, start a set of seeds and then that's it for that one variety. But there are some seeds such as like um, Orlea, or stock or cosmos, things along those lines, where you can do multiple rounds of those seeds and get the plants going. Because a lot of them, such as Bells of Ireland, once you've cut the blooms off of it, it does not replenish with new blooms. So you wanna have another plant that's maybe you know two to four weeks behind it in growth that you can replace it with and then keep all of your blooms going for an extended amount of time. This year, I'm not gonna be utilizing straight seed starter soil. I'm gonna mix in a little bit of my standard standard um, potting soil with my seed starter soil to hopefully reduce the cost a little bit of what I'm spending to go into these containers. I'm also hoping that by mixing up the seed starter soil with some regular potting soil that that will allow me to keep my plants in some of these containers for a little bit more time than I typically would. Basic seed starting um, soil or material doesn't have any nutrients in it. So by adding in some of the potting soil, I'm also gonna be adding in a little bit of nutrients, which will extend the life of the seedlings within their containers. Okay, so let's get started on mixing up some seeds. Okay, so I have one of the old um, containers, my seed starting containers, and eight of these fit in one, which works really, really well. They'll each have their own individual domes so that I can determine how much water I want in each of them, which will work really, really great. So I've gone ahead and set this up, and I just wanna make sure everything fits, and I'm gonna put this towards the back. Then I'll teach, take each container at a time and stuff it full of the soil, and then put it back into the larger container at the back, which works really well. Okay, so next I have a container of water that I can add to the soil. You want your soil to be moist when you're adding it to your trays. You don't want it to be sloppy wet with like water dripping everywhere. You don't want it to be hyper dry, anything like that. Just enough that the soil comes together and you can kind of mold and squish it and it kind of just stays together. So I just buy a standard um, soil mix from 
the big box store. I don't have any particular brand that I really care all that much about. It tends to be availability. I really do want to look onto Amazon and see what the cost is of buying soil, seed starting soil from Amazon versus buying it um, at the big box store. So I'm going to go ahead and drop all of this in here. And then next I have some standard potting soil. I'm going to add maybe a third to a half of the amount that I had of the seed starter. So maybe two parts seed starter to one part soil, uh, potting soil. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a mix with my hands. So next I'm gonna be getting adding water. And if any of y'all like watching um, any of the YouTube or social media, um, uh, particular sites that deal with like making dough, bread dough. I love making that. I think it's such a fun thing. So I just kind of created a um, little bit of a valley in the center, almost a volcano situation. And I'm just going to be adding a little bit of water at a time, mixing up as I'm going and pulling the soil from the bottom up to the top. Typically when you're mixing soil and you throw, put the water in, the water immediately goes to the bottom of the soil. It doesn't stay on top. So a lot of times I like to draw my hands over and pull it over like that. And so right now it's too dry, right? So I'm just doing this and it all is just falling apart, right? So we definitely know that we need more. So continue adding soil a little bit at a time or adding water a little bit at a time. Okay, so we're getting to a good consistency. I'm able to squeeze and it kind of stays together. It's not dripping water, but it's not falling apart. I think we're good. So I'm gonna take my first cell tray and I'm just gonna work the soil in. Do one layer and then I just take two fingers, push it down. I mean, I don't want it to be like super tight in there, but I definitely don't want it to be super loose in there either. All right, and then I'm going to clear out my center one, run my hand over the top. There we go. There's one. And because of the slots, I can make sure that you can see that the soil is all the way to the bottom which is great. So no weird air pockets or anything like that. So let's go ahead and get these finished up. Okay, so one bag of the seed starter mix and maybe a sixth of the bag of potting mix ended up filling two sets of trays, which is eight, 64, 128 cells. Awesome. Now, remember, the point of what I'm doing is that I can have humidity domes on each of these individual sets of eight cells instead of one large humidity dome on all of it. It allows me to condense what I'm doing. It allows me to really control what's going on with each of these eight cells. And that works better for me as a smaller gardener in that I don't want to grow 100 or 72 of one particular variety of seed. I just don't have room for it. It's not my thing. So let's talk about the seeds that we're going to be growing today. Okay, so I'm going to be starting five varieties of seeds today. These seeds have actually been in the freezer for a couple of weeks to go through a cold stratification process. It's not required. You do get better germination if you do so. And so the five that I put in there, and I've got others in there, are status, strawflower, scabiosa, snapdragon, and stalk. Um, we're all in there. So I've got my status and this is a status that I am growing from, let me go out, it's still in the freezer. Okay, this first variety is status from um, Baker Creek and it is Pacific Mix. And let's see, these are surface so, so it sounds like they do need light. Um, to germinate so indoors eight weeks before last frost barely covering the seed as light is required for germination i'm just going to leave the seed on top um, requires full sun rich soils with excellent drainage and can grow as a perennial in zones nine through ten i am not that zone, so that's why i'm starting these right now so i'm going to start by just sewing one tray of these 
They are surface sew, like I said before. And like I also said before, I'm going to be heavily uh, seeding my cells. And then because I want to get maximum poss possibility for germination since I am starting less cells. So I'm just going to take about three of them, three seeds per cell. All right, and then I'm gonna just lightly press these into the soil to make sure that they have really good contact with the soil. All right, and then I'm checking my finger to make sure I don't have any of those seeds left down there. Okay, and then so this is going right back in, the remainder of the seeds. And then I just use a basic label right here. I get it from Amazon. It's on my Amazon storefront. I'll drop that link below if you're interested. These work fine. Um, are there better options? Probably, <laughs> but I'm happy with these options and I'm just using a Sharpie to write on them right now. And I am using purple because I went to TCU and go TCU. All right. And so there I go. I've got my first one set up just like that. And then it's humidity dome will go across. Now, once I've got this whole container seated right here, I will mist everything down with water first before I put the individual humidity domes on. So let's go ahead and work through a few more varieties. The next variety I'm gonna start, start is status apricot and it is surface sew as well. This particular one is from In My Gardener who I actually really love in my gardener for his information. I wish he would carry more flowers, more flower seeds, but I understand like um, his, his deal is food. Um, you know, taking care of yourself, being self-sufficient, which is great, but that's not me. I like flowers, <laughs> but he does have some varieties. And so whenever he does, I try to order from him. The prices are really, really good. Okay, I'm also going to grow a new to me variety from Johnny Select Seeds. It is called Forever Silver Status and it is surface sew as well. Okay, and then one more variety of status. I am starting a Russian Status. And this is from Botanical Interest. And this actually has a very different variety of seed, it's much smaller. Okay, and then I will actually put my status container back into the freezer in case these don't work out and then these seeds will already be stro uh, cold stratified at that point to still continue with another round if I need to. Okay, next let's talk Scabiosa. I have three varieties that I wanted to start on Scabiosa, I believe. Yes, that's correct. So the first variety is a salmon rose scabiosa from Johnny's. The second is Fama Blue or Fama Deep Blue from Johnny's. And the third is Fama White scabiosa from Johnny's. So they recommend transplant, um, barely cover as light aids germination. So we'll keep these right on the top. Transplant to cell packs or larger, blah, 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 hard it off. Okay, we're good. So these are about a 10 to 12 day germination. So let's go ahead and get these started. I'm just going to do one set of eight per variety. Once again, these are surface sew. Definitely bigger seeds, which is great. I'm going to put probably three seeds. Yeah, I'll probably do two. I think I'll do two. So I'm pressing them down to make sure they have good contact with the soil. Okay, so the next um, flower I'm going to be seeding is straw flower. I am doing a mix this year. This is Johnny's from Johnny's Selected Seeds. This is Monstrosum Tall Mix. And so it's a wide variety of colors. Um, these are surface sewn. They do need light for germination. I'm going to sew two cells. So I'm going to do one set of 18 and, or excuse me, one set of eight and another set of eight for a total of 16. These tend to be a little bit smaller plants for me. And I do know that I can fit quite a bit in a small area. Okay. 
Okay, so this is my misting bottle that I like to use. I also got this on Amazon, and I will link this below. It puts off a really fine mist without disturbing the seeds. So since I'm done with this particular flat, I'm gonna go mist it really well. We'll go ahead and put some tops on. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pour a little bit of water into each of these containers and allow it ooh, to go ahead and continue to moisten the cells. It lets the water out a little bit of time dripping. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and move this behind me onto my new DIY. My do, new DIY grow light shelf. Perhaps I should have watered it in place. <laughs> there we go. Yay, first egg! Yay! Let me show you a close up of it dripping. Cool, huh? All right, the two varieties of stock I'm going to be starting are um, both from Florette. One is apricot and one is avalanche supreme. Okay, stock seeds are sewed just a quarter inch deep. Okay, and then finally, I'm gonna th sew three varieties of Snapdragon. I'm gonna be doing Butterfly Rose. These are all from Johnny Selected Seeds. Bridal Pink. And Madam Butterfly Bronze with White. And my friend Kristen really wants the Madam Butterfly Bronze with White, so I'm gonna sew her her own set of eight of that one. And then, so I'll do two sets of eight of that. And then I'll probably split the remaining with um, the Madam Butterfly Rose and the Bridal Pink. These are also surface sew and they are very tiny seeds. And I am going to go through and gently press these seeds down. But when I'm done, because these seeds are so small, I'm going to make sure, you know, to make sure to brush right back off over the existing cells, just in case I picked any up in this process. Okay. And I'm going to miss everybody really good. Okay, so that process went really well seeding um, in the studio for the first time. It did like the kind of pseudo seed trade situation. I was able to just pick it up, take it outside, um, just basically flap it off and it's good to go and then just folded it up. No big problem. I think the shelves um, so far, they fit everything really well. Um, so I think that'll be good. So I'll be following these and I'll be posting updates about this stuff on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, um, whatever social platform you utilize. And so I think it's going to work out good. I'm excited. I'm excited to get these started. So I only bought 16 of these Vigo trays to start off with this year. I didn't want to make a massive investment on them and then 
them being something that didn't work for me. So I bought 16 trays to start off. So that's all of these right here. That's all 16 right there. So now I will go back to my older method where I utilize the soil blocking, but I'm hoping to do that in smaller trays this year. So I don't have to do as many of one particular seed as I've done in the past. I want to do less, but I hope you guys enjoyed this process. I am going to be seeding every week, um, probably for the next 12 to 16 weeks it's going to be a lot so every week i'll be having a video posting of the seeds that i'm starting that week next week i'm going to be starting violas and pansies the following week i'm going to be starting another round of um, bells of ireland thistle delphinium week after that i'm going to be starting petunias and so there'll be a wide variety of flowers i'll be starting each week going up to the last frost date all right, you all, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you haven't already, go check me out on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook, and make sure you drop me a comment below. Let me know what you thought of the seeding process. I'm not sure how it's going to go with these new containers. I'm kind of excited to see how it goes. If you have any um, tips that you work for you every year, year after year, make sure you post that below, share it with the group. We'd love to hear. And then always, I would appreciate a thumbs up and a follow if you're interested. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.